My name is Jason Stearns. I have decided to make a series of clips about my career, how I sing, how I teach singing, and different things that I believe and I hope will help other singers in their goal to develop their voices. Um, it was always my thought as a young singer, what is that singer doing? The singer that I'm admiring, whether it's a Robert Merrill or a Cheryl Milnes or a Bastianini or a, there was um, Mac, uh, Mac McNeil, Cornell McNeil. There were so many great baritones. I'm a baritone. And I wanted to be able to understand what it is they're doing so that I can do it too. Because doing, what do you do? That was the question. I had a decent voice. I was musical. And for, fortunately, I've always sung professionally since I was 21. When I was 21, I was accepted into the United States Army Chorus, where I sang for 21 years. And I've had a varied career. I sang in the Army Chorus. After I retired from the Army, I took an audition for the Metropolitan Opera, and damn if I didn't get hired. And I started there in the chorus, and then a few years later, I switched over to a principal singer, and uh, over a period of 16 years, I sang at the Metropolitan Opera. And uh, even between the mil military and the Metropolitan Opera, I was a lead singer in a Las Vegas show for three years. I've done a lot of different kinds of singing. And now I am pretty much retired from my performing career, although I still sing, but I'm very interested in helping other singers to have a kind of a career like maybe I had. Because I figure if you're going to go for it, go for it all the way. So, the question then is, what do we do? That's always the thing that I question. I say, well, okay, I'm going to start with the male voice. The male voice. I personally believe that the male voice and the female voice, although there are similarities in what we do technically, uh, male voices have a certain uh, bunch of issues that are a little different than the female voice. Basically, the human voice has two parts to it. The easiest way to understand that is what we do when we yodel. If you yodel, you go, okay, what am I doing? Well, in your throat, you have two different muscle groups, basically, that allow you to yodel. That's understand. We can all do that. Most people could have been able to do that since they heard Julie Andrews do that in The Sound of Music. Yodeling is kind of fun, but yodeling is not really what we do when we sing. What does that mean then? Well, we have two different muscle groups. The male voice has to learn to combine the two. We don't sing either A or A. We have to combine the two. That's easy to do. How do we do it? Well, on my trusty Kanabi, I'm going to play a, let's say, a B-flat. On the B-flat, we're going to take the word sing. We love to sing, so we're going to take the word sing. S-I-N-G. Here's how I would tell you to do it. Sing. Sing. In other words, you're sustaining the NG. Mm. When I was a freshman at the Eastman School of Music, my teacher there, who was a very well-known operatic singer at the Metropolitan Opera she, uh, for 15 years, she called this an open mouth hum. Mm. So she would always have a start every lesson. Mm. Whether your mouth is open or closed, it's an mmm, not an mmm, not like mm, but ng, mmm. Okay, why do we want to do this? Well, for the male singer, 
This is his head voice. This is the higher part of the of the yodel. This gets the voice supported. NG is head voice. NG is breath support. NG is a good thing to incorporate. When you do this, you want to do it nice and straight, like that. Nice and firm, get it buzzing away. You'll find you can do this throughout your entire range. And this is the underpinning, this is the support, this is the head voice of your voice. Male voices are always a combination of chest voice, ah, and head voice. Mm, you put them together, you get it's a combination. You, you find that NG, you get the voice buzzing, and then you let the vowel sit on it. Oh, not ah, but oh. You can always go back and forth. The NG, there was a very famous teacher, oh, 150 years ago, named Lamperti. He called it the unseen, unfelt power of the voice. The NG is the hidden power of any classical voice, male or female. But for the men, it, we find it through the So I'll do it once with the just NG, and then I'll go without stopping, open to AW, A W, AW. Never AH, it's always AW, like AW, that's too bad. So you can hear that NG is, is in the sound, but when you push, when you go to a vowel, the NG empowers that vowel. It gives the, the vowel, whether it's AW or it gives the vowel presence, power, nobility, strength, projection. Without it, the voice is, has to be kind of managed by throat muscles. That's never a good thing. So, we started off this clip here talking about what we do, what you want to do, is find the NG in your voice. Everybody can do this. It may seem a little awkward at first, but if you do it and find that very simple sing, all of a sudden you'll discover, wow, I don't feel like it's in my throat anymore. It's like, it's all throughout me. The NG is, is in the pharynx. The pharynx is another fancy word for your throat. The top of your throat, above your larynx, that, that tube back there, that's your pharynx, or your throat. The sound resonates first in the pharynx, and then, of course, instantly in the oral cavity, oh, but never, ah, it's, and then into the mouth, and then out into the auditorium, church, opera house, wherever you're singing, theater. It creates an, an amazing resonance that seems to get even louder the farther away it gets from you. So give this a try. Start off discovering your NG, the engine of your voice, I call it. The NG is the engine. And let's get started with that. And then we'll take it from there.